seven. We have a go for main engine start. Five, three, two, one, zero. We have booster ignition and lift off of the space shuttle Endeavor, extending our reach while expanding our research and space. I'm NASA astronaut Victor Glover, and I'm honored to be here today to celebrate an icon a mentor and a good friend, Dr. Peggy Whitson. Peggy was the chief of the astronaut office when our class was selected. And when we showed up, you could tell that she really appreciated us eight balls. She liked us and we really liked her. And she was very good to us and showed us the ropes when we first got here. Peggy is, is, a, is a force of nature. Um, I, all I can say is whatever it is that inspired her to to eventually become an astronaut, I am thankful, thankful, thankful that she was persistent and uh, kept going and, and became the consummate astronaut and one to whom we all owe a great deal of admiration and respect, becoming the first non-military person, woman, to be chief of the astronaut office. Peggy has a life of uh, overachieving. I think that, that her flight after leaving the astronaut office and becoming an axiom astronaut and commanding AX-2 um, probably, for me, was one of her greatest accomplishments in her flying career. Before Peggy came to the astronaut office, she, as a scientist, was the lead negotiator on experiments that Americans were going to do on the Mir, and then also the uh, standalone space shuttle missions before ISS came along. But given all of that and how goal-oriented she is, it's a rare combination to work with somebody that also has phenomenal people skills. Peggy is really good to be around. She's a great teammate. She's a really good leader. There's really nothing that Peggy cannot do. Nobody will work harder than Peggy to get a job done. She is Kind of known as the Chuck Norris of space. Pretty much all the, you know, Chuck Norris jokes that you have. Um, they're they're basically Peggy Whitson. She uh, she beats things into submission and and is an absolute legend of space. I call her the Space Ninja. She makes space look easy, and she's at home in the stars. When she gets up there, the light switch goes on and. She just starts moving in ways that nobody can really even understand. I'd sit there, grab onto stuff, and just watch her go through a module. And she'd do this little push, and then somewhere in between, she'd like move her leg or something, and it would change her CG, and she would start to rotate, and then she would end up perfectly at a computer, already rotated, no extra effort, and, and you'd just be like, Peg, how did you do that? And she'd be like, I don't know. She's just that good. Peggy's very athletic. And she's, uh, I'll call her a gym rat, affectionately a gym rat. She's in great shape, which became evident by the way she was able to do all of these EVAs and spacewalks that are very physically intensive. She's managed to do 10 spacewalks, which is a record for an American woman to do the number of spacewalks that she has. Peggy's very efficient. She's, she gets stuff done. She would work all the tasks on her timeline and we had this um, basically like a job jar task list that she would knock off all the items on the task list. And she would say, I need more work. And people on the ground were actually getting tired trying to get activities ready. And we're like, time out, Peggy, we need a break. And she's like, there are no breaks in space flight. So it was like this legacy that lived on. So now she's coming back in Axiom 4 and there's new people there and they're still like, oh my gosh, we don't want to get in trouble with Peggy. And so it's, it's just adorable to watch that the legacy of someone who has a work ethic like she does that doesn't, you know, you can sleep when you get back down to Earth. We're only in space for a short amount of time, and we've got to work, and we've got to push, and we've got to achieve all everything we can achieve. You make every second count, 
uh, so you can make the biggest impact possible for humanity. And she feels that deeply. Every crew that she's been on, she expects a lot out of her crews and they know that she will be giving 110% of what she's got. So it's a, it's a mutual respect and a, a feeling that you, you just don't want to let the Space Ninja down. And as a result, um, her crews are, are awesome. They do a, a, a great job and it, it, it's fed from the passion and just the grit and hard work that she brings to everything she does. There's all the great science that she did. Um, that because she's a life scientist and there's a lot of life science um, experiments on board, she, she's really passionate about what she does day to day. Some of the experiments that she's been involved in have led to new treatments potentially for to uh, address cancer or to address you know, muscular dystrophy. So there's medicines, vaccines, um, growing cancer cells, growing stem cells, those kinds of things. She will light up when she talks about those things. And, and those are huge contributions that will be long lasting, long after the space station is no longer there with us. And long after Peggy retires from being an astronaut, she she's gonna leave a mark. She is a world-class researcher, scientist. She has street cred from day one of all of the programs she's led at the highest levels. And yet, she knows how to fix that toilet better than anybody on the station uh, because she's not above anything and that's just part of who she is. She is the whole package, uh, humble excellence and, and just an incredible human being. I know Peggy communicates well with the ground so that you work with the principal investigators, the true expert scientists on these experiments on station. And I'm sure Peggy's coordination with them has resulted in experiments being way more successful than they otherwise would have been. We went Beijing, Shanghai, went out to the launch site for all their human missions way out in the Gobi Desert. And uh, while we were in Beijing, I remember vividly the day that um, we had an opportunity to meet I think it was two Chinese uh, military officers, pilots, who were brought in because they wanted to meet Peggy. Uh, and I was, I was blown away by the, the, the fangirl nature of watching these two Chinese women meet a role model to them in Peggy Whitson. She was known uh, by reputation, um, you know, around the world. Even in the early days when we would go out to Russia and there weren't a lot of um, female engineers out there, um, they they know her. They say, you know, Peggy is a seal maya genshina. She's a very strong woman and a, a very umaya genshina, a very uh, intelligent woman. So she had a reputation over there about being um, a leader and um, a really good technical expert. Representation is critical to everything that we do. And Peggy's presence, just her mere presence, as I mentioned when we went to China, her, her very presence uh, changed the way I think that, that we look at, today we look at women in the space program. Thank you so much for helping guide us in the uncertainty of those first couple of years when we showed up here to the astronaut office. We hope that we continue to make you proud. Congratulations. I would tell you, as I think I've told you before and, and will continue to tell you, I, I am incredibly proud of you and so happy for you at, at, on this evening um, and welcome to the Astronaut Hall of Fame. I am so proud of you. I am not the least bit surprised that you're nominated in the Astronaut Hall of Fame. And it took a while because you were a NASA astronaut for as long as you were. Very impressively, you're not done flying yet. You're still flying in space on commercial uh, missions. And uh, it's my, my dear honor and privilege uh, to be here and talking about you today. Congratulations. So just want to say to the incredible space ninja, Peggy Whitson, Congratulations, what a well-deserved honor. You are the best, the best ever, uh, the GOAT of space, and I am so privileged to know you, to call you a friend and a sister. 
Love you, Peg. Congratulations. Peggy, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your special day. You know, when I met you over 30 years ago, I knew that you were special. And it has been a real joy watching you demonstrate that to everyone else over the last 30 years. You are a remarkable person, a one of a kind, and I'm so happy to call you my best friend. And I wanna thank you for being a blessing to me and to my family. And I want you to cherish this day and celebrate you today. So thank you so much and congratulations.